Glad to be back. Yeah, good to be back. Yeah, good to see some old faces. It's good. Just to explain, Aidy, what you've been doing on your return to Phil Mill this afternoon. Yeah, well, we arranged through the manager, me and Stal, we've we now qualified financial advisors, which we've been doing for the last couple of years, getting uh, qualified. And I got in touch with Dave Oldsworth, said, uh, could we come in? Because I felt that there was a need to come in and, and give lads advice. You know, we've, we've been footballers, we're coming to the end of our careers now. And, uh, you know, we've, we've looked to do something else and think if we can go and help other lads and that, with what bit of knowledge we've got or vast experience of knowledge, what we've got, whatever you want to call it, you know, we just want to go in there and, and try now and, and build up uh, a con you know, contact base and things like that and try and get some uh, number of lads that we can go out and, and advise financially. Stahl, specifically, what financial advice do you give? Uh, personal finance, basically. So be it mortgages, savings, investments, pension advice, um, insurance, you know, whatever. But basically we tailor it mainly for, for footballers um, because we use the, the knowledge we've got within the game. Uh, we know how footballers' finances work and we know they're slightly different from you know, the average person out in the street. So you know, they need specific advice based on that. So there was a need down at this level, certainly. But we, we deal in the league as well and we've been around speaking to lads at other clubs um, giving advice and, and you know, it's a valuable service that we provide, really. Why have you gone down this avenue then? Uh, well, because it's something that, that specifically interested me. The opportunity came up, um, you know, and like I say, it was in that transitional period that you've got to do something at the end of your career. You know, we'd all like to sit back and play golf and, you know, do nothing, put our feet up, but it's not a, not a case like that. So, you know, the chance came up. We, as I say, spent a couple of years getting, getting qualified and then qualifications are ongoing. You know, it's, it's, it's a tough regulated business to get into. But, um, yeah, this is going to be our career, you know, after football. AD, the PFA, do they not give financial advice of your ilk? Um, they do. They go, they go around the clubs as the union and they go around the, the football league clubs. What I found when I was at Mansfield, Mansfield had just dropped out of the league and that was the summer that I signed. And for the whole of the following season, um, there wasn't really any contact with the PFA. You know, the, they might have been busy or whatever, you know, dealing with the number of league clubs that they've got to do and uh, to fulfil that commitment. But certainly there was, there was no contact that season. And uh, I found just a number of lads in the dressing room as me being one of the senior pros um, in that dressing room coming to me quite often just asking various questions really regarding pensions and benefits that you get as a footballer, things like death in service, you know, which happens at every company that the work that people work for, Joe Public, you know. Uh, football's no different. So I found that a lot of lads were coming asking me these things and then since I've got qualified on this side of things, kinda of went to my boss and said, Well, you know, I think there's a need there, particularly at this level, because you know, one or two benefits do stop when the club drops out of the league uh, that they didn't have before. And I think lads need this pointing out. They need to be made aware of this. Um, so certainly, you know, I'm not going around slagging, slagging the PFA off or anything like that. But, you know, just 92 league clubs, whatever it is they've got to fulfil, you know, they can't get around everybody. And, you know, if that concludes a Mansfield, a Wrexham, whoever it may be, a Luton Town this year, you know, still, you know, you're still footballers. And uh, that primarily that's their job. And I just thought that there was a need to still continue that advice. You two have had distinguished careers, it's fair to say. In your time as a pro, and of course you're still now playing, you're coming to the end of, of your footballing lives, what would you say the biggest concern that a footballer has financially? Well, I don't think there's any one thing, to be honest. I think, I think the fact is, in a nutshell, the footballer's career, if he's lucky, ends at 35. You know, everybody else out there, you know, does a job until they're 60, 65, you know, so they've got a lot, lot more time to build up personal wealth, if you like. As footballers, you earn possibly better than average money, you know, that's not the case right across the board, but... Even at this level? Um, even at this level, some lads will be earning, you know, possibly more than, than they would be if they had to go in the job centre and get a job, because we know how difficult that is at the moment. Mm. So, um, you know... But what we're about is taking care of that money, making it do the best for the lads. You know, personal finance. You know, as a, as a footballer, speaking, you know, or an ex-footballer, if you like, going around, giving that reassurance, if you like, just informing lads what they have got, what they can do. You know, because at the end of the day, a lot of lads aren't aware of what's happening out there financially. And it's not something they want to get involved with and it's not something that they're particularly interested in. It's a case of sticking the head in the sand. We've learned now, going through the hoops and from personal experience, and that's probably the worst thing you could do financially is to stick your head in the sand because people out there will know they're losing money left, right and centre and they can prevent it. 
you know, and on, on the other side of the coin, you could make money. You can make your earnings do more for you. So that's what we're about. Like I say, we, we target mainly footballers because as ex-footballers, we've been through the hoops. We've been there. We've worn the T-shirt. You know, we, we've kicked the ball around. We've done all that side of it. But like I say, we do, we do advise anybody. We're qualified to give advice to anybody. And at the end of the day, it's a profession that, that at the moment we're enjoying and because you, you're giving a service to lads and you're helping lads with the money. You're going to retire soon, aren't you? Yeah. Why? Um, well, partly because of this, Steve, to be honest. Um, responsibilities of this have, have taken over. It's taken up a lot of my time. Like I say, I'm getting into it. Um, and you've got to give a level of service to, to people that you come across. Now, that involves taking time out and, and doing things the right way. And I found that basically playing part-time football doesn't give me the free time and it's not as, as you know, uh, flexible as it needs to be, you know, and, and I'm finding it difficult doing both. Something's got to give. Now, hopefully, this is going to be my career for the next 20 years, possibly. So, you know, football might be my career for the next 20 days, 20 weeks, you know, something like that. You've got to, you've got to call time on it sooner or later. And, you know, the body's telling me that it, it's probably time to, to call it a day. What do you like physically, then? Correct. No, 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 that's a joke. Um, I'm, all, I'm all right physically, you know, but I'm finding it, the transition from being, I've spent 18 years being a full-time footballer, you know, um, and all of a sudden to go part-time and have a, another career as well, find time to study and find time for the family, it's too much and, and something's got to give. Well, like I say, this is the career going forward and this is going to get my full attention. So, to be fair, football's the thing to fall by the wayside. I'm sure some will be surprised that you've made that decision so early. I say so early because you look say 12 months ago <laughs> no you look uh, <laughs> you look 12 months back you were playing here at Mansfield of course you finished our joint leading score in the end of the campaign but you look a year ago and you were you were pretty excellent weren't you certainly when you were when you were fit you were firing in the goals it was your first season in non-league but uh, you were doing the business I would do my best, Steve, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, cheer it a bit. Uh, um, yeah, it, it went well at the start of last season. But, like you say, a, a year's a long time in football. You know, from I'm, I'm 35 at the you know, back end of this month. So, I've had a great career, you know, in football. No worries there. But, um, like I say, just coming part-time now. You know, it's not exactly what I, what I was expecting it to be. Um, and like I say, the, the biggest problem is when you've played to a certain standard and you've given yourself certain standards about your expectations of where you want to play and how you want to play and you're not meeting them, it, it's mentally difficult. And like I say, this other opportunity has come along um, and I've spent a couple of years, like I say, the last couple of years getting qualified in it and I want to give it my me, me best shot. So, uh, you know, like I say... I'm 35 at the end of the month, Steve. I'm no spring chicken, so uh, you know it's got to end at some time. It wasn't an easy decision, but um, it's got to come to an end someday. And like I say, now's the time. regrets. Regrets. I'm not 21 again, but uh, no, mate, no. Like I say, I enjoy my life, so I don't look back on it and wish what if.